hello so in this video as i promised i'm going to talk about red flags to look for before during or after you know it applies in all situations because red flags let's get it right they are red flags all through and through right so i'm going to start with an obvious one a cliche one actually it's love yourself or it's going to be defined for you in all the wrong ways and here's what i mean by it if you do not know who you are what your value is what your worth is people are going to put price tags on you people are going to put 10 shillings 20 shillings one shilling some people are even going to take you for free you get if you do not have a value so place a value on yourself a value that cannot be measured with material stuff and I know there are people who will say, but I love a good life, so I have to put like a million dollars. Let me tell you, a million dollars is not worth you. You understand? You're worth much more. If you're worth a good life, you're worth much more. You understand? Number two, relationships magnify the issues you take away. Here's the funny thing. If you have issues, you know, people think okay. relationships like it's going to save them. Like it's going to save them from themselves, from their family, from their, you know, financial issues. But marriage magnifies every issue you have. If you do not deal with an issue when you're single, when you're by yourself, trust me, it's going to blow up when you get into a relationship. Because why? Because people come in with their baggage and it's like buttons get pressed and people blow up and voila, the tigers and the vampires and the vipers come out. You understand? So deal with the vipers and the vampires and the whatevers before you get into a relationship. You see, for every baggage you drop, you magnify or you elevate your standard of the person you attract. So let's say like if you deal with your issues of insecurity you will find you will attract people who are confident people who love and know themselves but if you get into a relationship or if you're single and you're not dealing with your issues of insecurities you will attract people who are insecure or people who elevate your standard or your level of insecurity what do i mean by this you will be in a kitchen being called being told to hit a sufuria, knock a sufuria so that they can know where you are. You understand? That's basic. I've actually summarized it for you. And people think these things are not happening. But I'm telling you, people, it's so weird the way people will define a love. Like, that is not love. Like, people have the Bible telling them what love is. And I'm telling you, we all derail. It's like we just want to rebel against anything. You know, it's not even about being right. It's just like we love to rebel. We love to hurt ourselves, right? Because we all do it. I do it to myself. So, number three, you must define your standards and expectations spiritually and physically or in depth and surface wise. This is what I mean. Know what you want in yourself and in your partner. You know, like, don't just date people to be in a relationship. Know exactly what you want in someone by the things you have molded, you have healed in yourself. So, to give a good example, this is what I mean. If for you, you feel like a career is important, date someone who understands the value of career, the value of working hard, the value of ambition. You understand the value of goals, the value of vision boards. You understand? If faith is important to you, you know, if God, and I don't mean just faith like a plaster on people, like if you deeply, deeply are in love with Jesus Christ, please do not date someone who does not value Jesus Christ because you will be annoyed, you know? look at it this way imagine you're in a relationship with someone who does not believe in god completely totally and i'm going to speak god like jesus christ because i'm a jesus lover you get so one person loves jesus christ like he will die for jesus christ then the other partner has no respect for this jesus it will be like every time the jesus lover talks about god it will be like it will be a rolling of eyes it will be like uh a dis you know like despising it will be like 
like what are you telling me like that is nonsense that is like ugh, you understand and the person who believes in jesus christ will be like oh you you're going to hell you argue about even a logical topic it will be like you're going to hell there will be no reasoning you understand so date someone who has the same beliefs in you has the same standards and expectation ex boy the english has choked or i have choked the english i don't like, know date someone you have the same or equal or you know somewhere aligned expectations and aligned standards you understand the next one is well, i love this one number four is the woman is as much a chooser as the man this means that not just one person is weighing the other's presence it's actually very shockingly two people weighing each other's presence whether fun or longevity wise this is what i mean by it and i'm going to target the females because i feel like the females are the ones who fall short of this glory so females have we have this thing where so here's the thing females have this thing where you go and ask a guy you're dating uh, throwing vibes at each other you get and then the vibes have been thrown until the boxes have been formed and then the female comes and asks the guy so what do you think we are honey if you need first of all if you need to ask anyone what are you you need to get out like that is like <laughs> mm -mm, we are not going there that is a situation you do not want yourself in and i feel like females you feel like it is a man who chooses you or a man feels like it is the woman who chooses you i'm going to include all because sometimes there are guys who are also treated like garbage and it's annoying so we are going to talk about all genders let me tell you relationships relationships involve both parties it means that you are checking me as much as i am checking you it means if you're not meeting my standards and if i'm not meeting your standards we cannot work together is that clear or should i repeat again like you no one has the right to say like if you're in a position where someone is telling you um so you ask what are we and then maybe the other person responds uh, let's just go along and see what happens honey hey, get out like get out Ama, you remember what i said about sometimes you need to slap yourself for foolishness to get out that is one of the situations where you need to slap yourself for that for that foolishness to get out because both of you are gauging each other and if it is one person gauging the other that is a failed thing because relationships are partnerships or both of you are bringing in seed both of you like you're planting seed both of you are watering the seed and both of you are waiting to see the fruit and if it is only one person planting it means it is only one person who is enjoying the fruits you understand what i mean so if you want to enjoy the fruits you better have standards expectations and the understanding that it is not you being chosen eh? is that right english i don't know who is to i don't know if i'm choking the english or the english is choking me but somewhere in between please understand it is two people choosing each other it is two people weighing each other's expectations and standards so with that said you have as much say as the other person has i know the bible says the man is the head of the house but honey we do not even have a house at this point you should not even have a house you should be like dating in the public in the public restaurants where you can pay your own bill so that you can walk out after eating your own food because uh -uh, we cannot allow that not in this time not in this time 2021 let's get it right where is he in here quarantine a laugh in here quarantine a relationship like come on you know do we need to fast and pray for people like let's wake up you know let's both understand our responsibility in choosing people like song and belly the next one is huh no relationship is perfect that does not mean lower your standards it simply means fit where god has created you to fit into oh this is another hot one 
you know people excuse people live in denial when they're in toxic relationships because no nah, relationship is perfect let me tell you honey a relationship a re no relationship is perfect but there is a relationship that is perfect for you and this is how you know if you're in a relationship where your dreams have died out like that is a red flag like that is the biggest red flag especially for females because females when um, um you know when you get into a relationship a man has been ordained to to lead you get he has been ordained by not not to dictate please understand me a man has not been ordained to dictate he has been ordained to lead what does that mean a leader is a servant so if this guy or is not leading you into purpose into dreams he's not elevating your life like that is already a wrong situation and for men if you're with a woman who is not prophesying goodness in your life and by saying prophesying it does not mean like shinde rikara baba you understand it means like prophesying means a lot of things it means if a woman is not speaking life into your life you know if a female is killing your vision like that is already a bad situation you understand i don't even know what i was talking about like yeah so when people say no relationship is perfect it does not mean stay in toxic relationships because no relationship is perfect there is a relationship that is perfect for you get right with god so that god can reveal to you what relationship is right for you and i know people are waiting for god to hit a drum so that they can know at the oh that is the one but god is not hitting drums god is coming in stillness in calmness in peace if you feel peace in a situation that is god if god is saying uh -uh, uh -uh, you know like that car voice in your mind that is telling you no that is uh -uh. That is God speaking to you. Do not wait for drums and trumpets and thunder unless it is the apocalypse. Then it is too late. You don't even need a relationship at that point. You understand? Next, ownership is not commitment. Ownership takes away your will. Commitment demands that you use your will to stay or to live. Okay, so this is what I mean. From my previous video, I talked about breakups and in that video i talked about how no one owns anyone and if you have not you know i don't want to get deep into this because it's a white topic please go back and listen to that and understand why ownership is not commitment and why commitment is not ownership commitment is not supposed to take away your will god does not take away your will he asks you to choose god has given you the will to choose so what does that mean the freedom of choice is in your hands the freedom of choice is in your partner's hands that does not mean they choose for you you choose for yourself and they choose for themselves so meaning in a commitment situation you both choose to commit to each other you both choose to work on a relationship together you understand as a team not one working and the other one is just eating the fruits get it the next one is everyone has had an issue and probably still does difference is some prefer their privacy private and some are leaving their truths out loud whether by choice or by circumstance okay this i'm going to speak about by people there are people who are so into obsessed with social media to the extent they get into relationships and try to emulate everything that people are seeing on social media let me tell you something people put their highlights on social media people even there are people who are even putting their best uh their highlights in real life when they get out of the door they seem like the perfect match when they get into the house there is violence there is you know abuse in speech there is abuse in people not serving their god-given purpose because of toxic relationships so before you get into a relationship please understand everyone behind closed doors is going through something everyone and it does not matter if it is a relationship situation or an individual situation everyone is going through something and it is best if you understand yours not other people's understand yours define yours 
know who to take it to. Whether you need to see a therapist or God, personally I prefer God. You know, then God leads you to the right people like therapists or counselors or you understand all that sort of thing. And others, you just deal with it yourself in a positive thing. Find books or shows or podcasts that help you get out of funks. The next one is this one I already spoke about it. If you need to ask what are we or what are we doing, you already know what it is. That's simple. If you need to be their conscience, you are unequally yoked. So understand and ask yourself, is that really your purpose or do you need to seek God to clarify the confusion? Because Lord help us all. So <laughs> this speaks into if you're the person who is always telling the person what they are doing right, like you're basically the car or the car god on their shoulder telling them ah uh -uh, or yeah ah, uh -uh, you understand? Like you don't need that burden. You are not God. You cannot help people in that sort of way. People need to grow up to be mature enough to hear for themselves their conscience what their conscience is saying. You get it? Like you do not need to carry the burden of telling people, please do not um go that way or please go that way you get you you cannot be google for everyone you understand so please stop being google for everyone be yourself you know mind your business and if you need to say that to them that's already an immaturity that's like basically speaking to a wall you understand it's like if you tell your wall go left it will not move unless you're speaking in faith if you tell your wall to go right it is not moving unless you're speaking in faith and i'm telling you faith is a lot of action so something is working you know and the i don't know if i'm making my point but when you take new nashita sawa for my foreigners you just catch catch what i'm throwing <laughs> okay next one is it's never too late to raise and set your standards your limits let's say for this one is for the people who started off those of us who started off i'm going to be all inclusive those of us who started off on a bad foot on a wrong foot unatua, like you did not have standards you did not know values it was not even a word in your mind you know like expectations and values and worth and standard let me tell you, right now, it's never too late. It does not matter what people are saying or what labels have been placed on you or whether you have been with benefactors or sponsors or waze or young younger people because these days even older people are finding younger, you know, kids. Like, I don't even want to go that topic because it trails me up. Like, it's never too late to raise your standards. It's never too late to uplift your worth, to walk by your worth and your value. Get it? Let's keep it simple because I feel like that topic will start going into another issue that I do not like about older people going with kids. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this world is sick. Do you want marriage or commitment? In this generation, the two are completely and utterly different. So this is basically, I don't know if I spoke about it in this video or the other one, about marriage and commitment are two different things. Like, uh, marriage is basically like a written paper. It can be ripped off. It does not mean much if the people who wrote on it or who signed it do not hold value to it. You get what I mean? And this is what I mean by it. Yesterday, you know, I think I, I wrote something. I'm sure I wrote something. But I cannot tell you what I wrote on that paper. And mind you, for those who know, I do write a lot. I have a blog where I write, you know. And so follow me. I'm going to put the link in the description box below or pop it up here. So with that said, Please understand, marriage is not commitment. So if you're looking for love, or if you're waiting for love to look for you, please understand, marriage is not commitment. Look for commitment, not marriage, because commitment will stick with you despite the paper or with the paper. But marriage, by marriage I mean no commitment. 
it means that I will sign the paper and I will still treat you like whatever I want to treat you as. I will treat you as a doormat if I feel like doing it because, you know, I'm not committed. I'm not committed to your values, to your worth. I'm not committed to the sanctity of relationships as it should be. Relationships are sacred things. Sacred, not things. But you get what I'm saying. You understand? Next one. Like, share, subscribe. I couldn't stay, take me or leave me